back. I'm so excited about today's video because we're talking more gluten-free meals, cooking, baking, all the above. But today it's a special edition for fall, which I knew that I had to do just because fall is like the best season for soups, chilies, comforting, warm, cozy meals, and also the baking and just everything. It's just the best. You guys know that I love fall. It's like, that's an understatement, but I wanted to talk about food today. I'm so happy you guys love these videos because I love filming them. You guys know I love to sit and talk about food and cooking and just all that. I'm so passionate about it. So it's really fun to share with you guys and I'm glad that you get some inspiration from it. Before we get into it though, I do want to share today's video is in collaboration with Magic Mind, which if you watch my videos, I'm sure you've heard of them before. I've shared this little amazing productivity shot multiple times. I do have a 20% off coupon code if that sweetens things at all. I'll put it in the description box. It's just truly Jamie 20 but this little shot is packed with so much goodness. And let me just tell you about some of the ingredients in here. I know I always mention like it has lion's mane, it has turmeric, it has vitamin D, all of that. But I haven't really broken down what all of those ingredients entail. I'll link their website below so you guys can read up on more of them. But just the ingredients that stand out to me, I wanted to share what each of them do. As you can see, the shot is green. And the reason for that is that there's matcha in this little shot. So that works to boost your energy, obviously from the caffeine, but it's also full of a ton of antioxidants, which is just the start. There's a ton of immune boosting ingredients in here as well. Vitamin D, vitamin C, cordyceps mushrooms. The cordyceps mushrooms are also gonna work to boost your endurance and reduce inflammation, and the lion's mane mushroom. What these ingredients are also gonna do is reduce stress and anxiety and boost your memory and your focus. Vitamin B and D both promote cognitive health, which is brain health, and it's gonna help you with your anxiety, your stress, your energy, your focus. And you're also gonna have ashwagandha and turmeric in here, which ashwagandha is known for reducing stress and anxiety. Turmeric is known to boost your mood and promote healthy circulation, as well as reducing inflammation. So everything that you have in this one little shot is really just going to promote overall wellness over your entire body. We have stress and anxiety reduced. We have energy and mood boosted. We have healthy circulation, brain health, a stronger immunity. There is just so much to love about this little shot. So I'm going to link it below for you guys, but I love it. I've been using it for a while and I could definitely recommend it to you guys. While I am collaborating with them, I would never, ever, ever collaborate with a brand that I don't stand by and don't use and love. So I'll have that in the description box. If you guys want to check them out, it'll be linked below with my code trulyjimmy20. Shout out to Magic Mind for collaborating with me on today's video. Now let's go ahead and get into it. So there's one meal that comes to mind when I think of fall and winter cooking and eating. And I bet you guys can guess it. I'll give you a few seconds. Soup, of course. Like how could it not be soup? It's soup season and I just love it so much. I love creamy soups. I love brothy soups. I love soups with rice. I just love it all it's so so good let me paint a picture of like my perfect fall afternoon let's say sunday my perfect fall afternoon at home let's say that so i'm chilling it's sunday maybe i did a little bit of cleaning but that's done i lit a candle i'm relaxing on the couch reading a book maybe watching a good show or having a movie day and i decide that i'm going to start dinner a little bit early so that it can slow cook on the stove and while that's happening all the flavors are just floating throughout the house like it just smells like a good home cooked meal is on the way and it's so cozy so comforting so warm maybe it's tomato soup maybe i'm going to make up some grilled cheese and i'm dipping that grilled cheese in my soup and the flavor are so vibrant and delicious because it's been slow cooking and it's just heaven so that's my perfect night at home in the fall you know I have my candles lit I have my fall decor up forgot to mention I'm probably having a glass of wine in there somewhere too maybe a nice glass of red wine with my tomato soup delicious and maybe I have a fire lit if it's cold enough we're not there yet but there will be a fire lit at some point maybe not till December but we can pretend in this perfect world that I have a fire lit so yeah that's my perfect day and soup is included in that fall perfect day so I knew right away how to talk about soup today um soup can be easily made gluten-free like 90% of the time um, because most of the time if there's a thickening agent it's flour and there's gluten-free flour out there so that's all you got to switch out aside from that soup is easily gluten-free so I wanted to talk about a few of my favorite ones to make this time of year and just soups that I love I will link any recipes below that are available or if they're mine I'll just type them out and you guys can screenshot and do whatever since I mentioned it I obviously have to talk about my tomato soup first I have talked about this a few times I've been sharing this recipe for probably like five years on my Instagram I even have the recipe on my blog so you guys can um, check that out. I'll have it linked below. I've been making this tomato soup for so long. I don't even know how long it's been. I think it's been since before I was gluten free, which is crazy. And this is just a naturally gluten free recipe. Obviously, if you're going to make grilled cheese, you just have to use gluten free bread, but that is it. And it is so delicious to me. This is like the epitome 
of a comforting homey meal. It's best served with the grilled cheese or maybe croutons, maybe just a little like toasted baguette. Something to dip in it is just like, don't miss out on that, it's so bomb. And the leftovers are amazing too because the flavors just marinate even more and it's just like, you think it can't get any better and then it does. So make it, if you don't have it this fall or winter, you're not doing things right, make a tomato soup. It's just, it's the best. Now next up, I wanna talk about potato soup. Not just any potato soup, potato leek soup. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I love potato leek soup. If you guys haven't had it before, order it next time you see it on a menu or just, just check it out. It's delicious. Um, I love any type of potato soup, to be honest, like a baked potato soup or um, what else is there? Is that kind of it? Like a baked potato cheddar soup? Like, I don't know. There's probably other kinds of potato soup, but that's just the first one that comes to mind. Um, potatoes are just good in all forms. Like. You know, I don't think many people would argue that, but potato leek is so delicious. I think the element of the leek kind of balances it out so it doesn't feel so heavy. Potato leek soup, try it. I'll link the recipe that I use below. I do think there might be flour in here. If there is, I just use Bob's Red Mill one-to-one gluten-free baking flour. The next recipe is a new addition for me. I've only made it one time, but it was definitely extremely memorable. I made it last year during the colder months. It might've been like during Christmas time or something, um, but I'm definitely gonna make it again this year because it was so, so good and I had never had it before and the reason that I made it was because my brother's girlfriend requested that I try to do a copycat recipe. It's the Toscano soup from Olive Garden. I think it's called like Zeppa Toscano soup or something like that. It's basically like Italian sausage with kale, potatoes, um, a creamy broth and it's so, so good. I think there's even bacon in there. Oh my gosh, it was delicious. It's a really good soup to add to your soup roster. So check it out. I got the copycat recipe from Pinterest and that recipe was naturally gluten free. So I would have to find out if the Olive Garden one is they might add flour or something like who knows you would just have to ask um, But this one you don't have to make any substitutions, which is just perfect next soup We have a classic chicken noodle soup. I honestly never was a fan of chicken noodle soup until I made it <laughs> That's just like so typical me. I'm like, mm, I don't like it, but I could probably do it better. Last year I was like, I really want to try to make a good chicken noodle soup with some gluten-free noodles. Um, and I also made my own chicken broth. So that's kind of what inspired it. I made a roast chicken and made a bunch of chicken stock from it. I'm pretty sure I used the Delalo like corkscrew style noodles, but I have found a noodle since then that I think would work better. Um, they were an egg noodle from... Oh, Jovial makes a great egg noodle. I made stroganoff with it and I was like, this would be the perfect chicken noodle soup noodle. I'll just put a picture on the screen so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But I'm gonna make that again soon. I'm gonna use those noodles and I'm sure it's gonna be incredible. So um, I really loved that. I had a ton of flavor and that made me very happy because ones that I had in the past, did not. So, you know, if something's not done right, you gotta do it yourself. So when I think of fall and winter cooking, I think of soup. Obviously we established that. And then I also think of chili, like a chili slow cooking on the stove for like five hours, making your whole house smell amazing. And then you get to enjoy it at the end of the day and the leftovers are even better. I just love it. So chili is a category today. I have two that I wanna share. I've shared them in the past, but in case anyone's new, I'm gonna share them again. Um, I have a turkey chili recipe that I've been making for years that I think is just so incredibly delicious and just smacks every single time. It's so good. So I love to pair that with some gluten-free cornbread. That's also ultimate comfort food. Cornbread is just the best. And paired with the chili it's like just game over but if you're not into chili like that maybe you don't like the tomatoey sauce or if you're just it's not your thing you want something different maybe with a little bit of spice you should try my white chicken chili oh my gosh it is so good i sometimes can't decide which is my favorite because they are both that delicious um, i love making each of them because again they feed a lot of people i like doing it for family dinners or if we're having just like people over it just i feel like it never ends and then there's still somehow leftovers it's my favorite um so so white chicken chili is basically with white beans instead of like red kidney beans or pinto beans and then you use chicken instead of a turkey or a beef and then you also do green chilies jalapenos cilantro which is kind of more of like a tex-mex kind of vibe for a chili rather than a classic turkey chili with red beans um, and tomato sauce and all that. Um, it's so good, it's creamy, it's delicious. And you could also do the cornbread with this. But what I like to do for this to kind of switch it up is do a jalapeno cheddar cornbread. So I do that same cornbread recipe. I just add a slice of jalapenos and some cheddar cheese and it just pairs perfectly. Then onto my next category, I don't really know what to call this. I'm just saying more comfort food. Like who knows, I can't 
put all of these into a box. First up is Swedish meatballs with mashed potatoes. I love meatballs of all kind, but a Swedish meatball with that gravy is just next level. I have a core memory with Swedish meatballs as well because I did, I think like one of my school projects on Sweden, I think it was like our, you know, elementary school country project. I picked Sweden because I am Swedish. And at the end of the project, every student brought food from their certain country and we had like a little food festival in the classroom and my mom made Swedish meatballs. And I just think about that every single time I make them. She never gave me a recipe or anything, so I had to find my own, but it still reminds me of her. Nonetheless, it reminds me of being a kid. They're so good. And it also reminds me of Ikea. If you guys haven't had the Ikea meatballs, oh my gosh, those are everything. I love pairing them with mashed potatoes. They're also good with noodles. So much flavor and everyone's gonna love them. So make Swedish meatballs this fall. It's a bit different than the soup or the chili, but comforting nonetheless. Next dish is gluten-free lasagna. I found an amazing recipe a few years ago on Pinterest. I still have it, so I'm gonna link it below. It's the one that I go to when I make this, and it's so good. Oh my gosh, you make your own sauce, of course. I feel like if you're gonna go through the trouble of making lasagna, you should do the whole nine yards because it's not that difficult and it's so worth it. I love the Berea lasagna noodles. I will shout out my mother-in-law really quick though because when she's made lasagna in the past, she always makes my own little mini version with the gluten-free lasagna noodles from Bria, and it's just always so appreciated because it's so good. So when I make it, those are the noodles I use as well. I have yet to see a ton of other gluten-free lasagna noodle options. If you guys have seen any, let me know, but those are definitely really good. You don't need to pre-boil them. You just layer them and then put it in the oven and that's all you have to do. So it's actually a little bit easier than normal noodles. Finally, we have a win as gluten-free people. Next up, we have a pot roast with mashed potatoes. You guys, trust me when I say I have the best pot roast recipe for you ever. It is just top tier, so good, best pot roast I've ever had. I had kind of like a funny opinion of pot roast for so long too, because it was like one of those meals as a kid, if I asked my mom like, what's for dinner? And she said pot roast, I was like, and then if I saw that crock pot out, I was just like so disappointed. Um, and I just feel like I just never liked it. This one, the reason that it's so incredible because it's made in the Instant Pot and the meat just falls apart. I saw it on Summer Party's Instagram story and then she shared the recipe in a video and I was like, you know what? This actually looks pretty damn good over a bed of mashed potatoes, like, say less. So I made it and I made it many times since then. I made it for family dinners. I made it for Marcus's family and everyone always loves it. It has so much flavor and it's, you know, honestly pretty easy to make and it feeds a lot of people. Next up we have coconut curry and I have two different kinds that I really love to make. I have a chicken coconut curry that I got from Pinterest that's made in the Instant Pot. If you guys don't have an Instant Pot, you need one. The way that it cooks meat so quick, but also it's so tender. Nothing will ever be dried out. It's always juicy and tender and just like falling apart in the best way. Try it, get an Instant Pot. You won't regret it. I love it so much. And then I also have a shrimp coconut curry that I also got from Pinterest that's also really good. Um, same thing, I serve that with coconut rice and it just, all the flavors together is so great. Top it with some red chilies and it's delicious. I think what I love about the coconut curry is that it has that sweet element to it. So it really balances out all the herbs and the spices. I personally think it's so good. And I find it's a good way to kind of mix up from the normal flavors that I'm eating. Um, I think it's delicious. So that's it for the dinners that I wanted to share. I think there's definitely something for everyone in there. If you guys make any of these, please let me know in the comments. I love hearing when you guys try my recipes or if I'm even just inspiring you to try something new. Even if it's not my recipe, I love hearing from you guys. So please let me know in the comments. But for the next few, I have a breakfast and then a few baked goods that I want to share that just scream fall and autumn to me. So first up is oatmeal. I love oatmeal. Now I will eat this year round, but I feel like I really, really eat it a lot in the fall and winter because it's warm, it's cozy, and it's just the best. So I have a few oatmeal recipes that I really love, but my typical one is a brown sugar cinnamon oatmeal, and I will put that in the description box. I just have it written out. It's pretty simple. Um, that is really delicious, and I always like to make enough to you know have for the next few days. That's one thing I love about oatmeal, a little goes a long way because of the way that it expands and it's just so good. It's just so nice to pop in the microwave in the morning when I have it prepped. Takes just a few minutes, easy on the go. But one that I really love to make during the fall season is apple pie oatmeal. I top it with some cooked caramelized apples and the combination is just, you guys, you gotta try it. It really tastes like fall to me. Like, I don't know if it's just because I always make it this time of year, but the flavors, like there's cinnamon, there's nutmeg, applesauce just to make it like nice and creamy and it's 
so good. A little bit of maple syrup. Oh my gosh. I actually posted the recipe on my reels. So I will link that reel below and the recipes in the caption. Um, it's so easy to make. I think if you're going to make any of my recipes, this one probably takes the least effort um, because of how quick it is. And it's a breakfast, like just do it. It's so good. Next up, let's talk sweets and baked goods. I mean, this is the time of year where the sweets start rolling out and it seems like it's nonstop until January. I personally love it because I have honestly become quite the sweet tooth. I'm obsessed with my salty food, of course, but I love dessert. I love having a little some sweet. This time of year is really fun because I love pumpkin. I love maple. I love just any type of flavor like that. It gives me all, dare I say, the feels, as cringy as that sounds. So first up, we have a recipe that I actually made for the second time last night. Gonna be a tradition, mark my words, because these are so good. But I made blondies and they are so good. And the reason that I'm calling these like a fall treat is because I originally got the idea to make these while I was at grocery outlet. I saw these Lily's pumpkin chips. They were a dollar. And I was like, this looks like fun. There are pumpkin white chocolate chips for baking and melting. Sold. Let's do blondies. I'm going to find a gluten-free recipe on Pinterest. And that's what I did. And this recipe is so good. So these became fall when I added the pumpkin chips. And then I also decided to sprinkle in a little bit of pumpkin spice seasoning to get even more of that flavor. You probably could add pumpkin puree, but I didn't want them to be too overboard. I wanted to try the recipe as it was as much as possible so I can kind of test it out. And I can definitely confirm that these are two big thumbs up. They are just so bomb. Next up we have banana bread muffins. You guys, I feel like I have posted and shared about these so many times because I make them. It feels like almost every time I have browning close to rotten bananas because it's so good. It used to kind of be the thing that I made only this time of year and like towards the end of the year because it's very cozy and warm and just comforting. And I've been making them frequently the last few months. It's gone to the point where people like bring me their brown bananas. They are so delicious, so moist. And the way that you can make this a little bit more fall-esque is add pumpkin puree to it. So you can make these like banana pumpkin muffins. I do have that specific recipe on my blog, but if you don't want to pumpkin that's totally fine just substitute the pumpkin puree for an extra banana try it trust me you'll love them last thing i wanted to share today is the ultimate fall dessert i know you guys are thinking like how has she not mentioned pumpkin bread yet and here i am to say pumpkin bread so i wanted to shout out the trader joe's pumpkin bread mix because it's so good that i don't feel any need to try to perfect my own recipe or make something from scratch I love making things from scratch, but I just love this Trader Joe's one. It's just so convenient and it's so delicious. So if you guys haven't had it before, try it. You can make muffins or bread. I have done both. I've even made like a little cream cheese frosting for the muffins that I've made before. Those are incredible but i also love doing the bread and eating it with the pumpkin butter if you guys haven't had that it's also from trader joe's and it's just next level you guys will love it if you like pumpkin you cannot go wrong it does not taste gluten free at all but that is the end of this video i really hope you guys enjoyed and got some good inspiration for the fall season if you have anything else you want to see please let me know in the comments and also shout out to magic mind for collaborating with me on today's video make sure you guys check that out before you go so you can start your mornings off right and have lots of energy focus less anxiety less stress just everything we want in life. My coupon code is trulyjimmy20, check it out. And that is pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.